cinewoops. They mostly fly like cinepoop. Stop saying shit like that. It's unprofessional. Because of the ducted design that keeps everything safe, you introduce a lot of extra prop wash and weird handling and just overall heaviness carrying a giant camera. But thanks to DJI's O3 Sys, now they're beginning to get smaller and smaller. And Beta FPV's new Pavo 20 is the best one yet. It beats the Pavo Pico and the larger Pavo, and it beats the Mobula 8. This two inch version upgrades motor and prop size of the Pavo Pico. It also adds a, this one increasing the prop size up to two inch, mating it to an 1103 8500 kv motor with a two bladed prop in a pusher configuration there's been a number of enhancements that come out next to the pavo pico one it gives you a little bit more power and a little bit more prop size which is going to make it still very lightweight but fly a little bit better the ducks are designed with a little flat ridge along the bottom what's that for it's so you can attach cob led and it's cool that they figured out a way to have plug and play solution and it's it's got super sick LEDs on board. Check this out. This Cobb LED system is exactly the same technology that I did on my tutorial on how to install these same type of lights onto a seven inch and Beta FPV designed it their new duct frame for the Pavo 20 in order to have a flat side that perfectly fits this. Now, these LED strips are coated in sort of a silicone, so it has two uses. Not only does it light up in what in a variety of colors. Now, each set of LEDs can only do one color, but they offer different options, red, green, blue, white, and because of the thickness of the L of the silicone that's covering the LED, it offers you an extra bit of cushion. In fact, this was one of the nicest things to impact because it just gently pushes you back and you can keep flying, not nearly as bad at crashing as some of those other wobbly center whoops because of the way it's so balanced. Now it gives you a little bit of extra length on this. So rather than cut it, I just ran it up to the top and gave it like a little LED mohawk right there. Man, this thing is sick. Of course, you're gonna have your plug and play to the DJ i03 connector right there your led wire for the cob strip is down here at the bottom so it just feeds in there and plugs in and then this has a double-sided 3m tape so we're going to install that around the outside and then you have a third connector this right here is going to be for the usb c that means that it enables you to have this mounted a little bit cleaner a little bit lighter and not have that connector in the way, making this board really something. It's just fantastic. In addition, they've gotten rid of the little holder at the bottom and added a strap. That means that you can fit a variety of battery sizes. Part of the issues on the Pavo Pico and even the Happy Model version was that you had to use a specific size battery. And if you wanted a little more flat time for maybe a little bit more weight, it just wasn't possible. But now you should be able to fit just about whatever size battery that you want. 2S and 3S packs should fit in there just fine. They've also really made a huge bump up to the design of this little Canopy camera DJI O3 unit holder. Yes, it has threaded nut inserts. So all you need to do in order to install it is just line it up very easily, just like that. Install the screws from the bottom and you can even see very clearly if you have that hole lined up. Oh my gosh, I have such appreciation for that. If you remember, this is the canopy to that happy model. Uh, Mob 8, I believe it was the DJI O3 version, and my goodness, this was so torturous to get together because, look, it just has little holes you put the screw in, and it has nuts on the other side, and trying to hold those things together while unscrewing them is just a nightmare. This having a threaded insert probably doesn't even add anything to the cost of developing this, but the ease of installation and setup is just so so much easier it does come in there with the two little nub antennas for the dji o3 of course it has an xt30 with a capacitor right there now this is your beta fpv 20 amp f4 
board in there. If it's nice and clean, look how small of a profile I've managed to get to there to where the only extra thickness that you're gonna have on this is the O3 unit. This is, in my estimation, going to be the perfect intersection of power, low weight, and size. Some of those small ones like the Pablo Pico would really struggle in wind having a smaller 40 millimeter prop size, but this takes it all the way up to two inch. Here's Happy Model's version of their two inch. They use a three bladed prop, but a very similar motor size. This one though, you can see that it's much more of a whoop style frame. This one with these little trusses should get you a lot less vibration in there. And they've also built in some dampening uh, into this. So the evolution and design should yield you a nice smooth flight. Now the thing about these tiny little cinema whoops is they just have this little piece of copper wire as your control link express LRS antenna. But if you wanted to get a little bit more range, you could use Beta FPV's new Super G system. This is a system that can plug into a tiny nano size module or with this adapter go into a full micro size module and it's gonna have two antennas connecting to this type of a receiver that actually has two little receivers on there. So it has full redundancy. Lot better design as far as giving you full camera protection. It dampens the O3 unit. It gives you a strap instead of a holder, meaning that you can use whatever size two or three S battery you like. I love that I can use the same three S 550 milliamp tattoo batteries that I use for racing tiny trainers. That is a huge win and it flies so well. In fact, this battery on the bottom with this air unit on the top makes it handle perfectly balanced from top to bottom on that pitch axis. You know what it reminds me of? If you've ever seen a gimbal, no, not one of those new fancy DJI Ronin gimbals, but the old school kind before they were motorized, what would it have? It would have weights on the bottom, a series of bearings in the middle, and your camera at the top. And the goal was to get the camera perfectly balanced with the weights on the bottom so that it wouldn't swing around so much. And that is very similar to the balance and weight that this thing achieves. It just floats in the air effortlessly, and it is the best intersection of lightweight, but still enough power to toss around that I have seen on any Cinewoop. So all these bigger ones I'm selling, I would consider since the Avada came out, this is probably the ultimate all around thing. It can fly in small spaces, it can be well controlled, it can fly with a little bit of wind, but it is still sort of a chunky boy and a bit expensive. This will allow you to achieve 85% of everything that that thing can do for a fraction of the price. What are you doing for Santa Whoops? Are you on something like the Avada? Are you on a Squirt 2, like the old school version? Are you on something like Fox Ears Unbreakable drone, like this bad boy right here? Are you on the Pavo Pico? The Pavo Pico was great, but honestly, this has almost as much control indoors and outdoors. It is so much better because of the extra power and a tiny little bit more weight, but it still keeps it at about 150 something grams with the battery. It's a no brainer guys. This is the way to go. They sell this kit for only just over a hundred bucks. I think it's about 115 bucks. You add in your DJI 3 and boom. Now the other thing that made this so much better is because beta fpv is learning how to mount this o3 system on some of the earlier versions it was a hideous chore in order to get the o3 mounted this one it comes with threaded inserts already installed in this top piece so it was only a few minutes and this thing was plugged into the o3 and ready to fly They've finally got the build process down. They finally added more camera protection. They finally added more balanced weight. They finally added more flight time because you can control the size of the battery that you use on this thing. They finally added better and more protective ducts. I mean, there was a time when Beta FPV didn't have the best reputation for listening to user concerns or reliability, but they are innovating extremely fast here. And this is the new choice for 2024. Which one do you want? Pavo 20, guys. Unless you happen to need extra speed for following something that's like moving with a motor, like an ATV or a motorcycle or something, this is gonna give you more than enough speed to follow a walking or running person. Not bad, guys. And probably most animals, unless you're for some reason trying to follow a cheetah. <laughs>